guys welcome back to another installment of black pride today we are talking about amanda la stenberg before the video begins i'm going to apologize about how my voice sounds and maybe you hear some echoes or a fan it's very hot where i live right now and our ventilation unit is not really working and it's not going to be fixed for a while and i'm going to be gone when it actually does get fixed so you're gonna kind of have to deal with this fan being in the background if it does even show up so sorry about that I'm just gonna have an echoey voice for a couple of videos hopefully it's not gonna last long and hopefully it gets fixed soon if you do not know who Amanda Lestenberg is I'm gonna read from Google right now that she is an American actress a singer songwriter she portrayed Rue in the Hunger Games Madeline Wither in Everything Everything and Star Carter in The Hate You Give I recognize her mostly for her role of Star Carter since The Hate You Give is one of my favorite movies from last year and is my favorite book that I've read, especially the sequel that the author had made and the new book that she's writing. But uh, I recognize her for that role because it's very strong. I didn't know that was her being rude in The Hunger Games because I'm not really much of a Hunger Games fan, but when I did see her in The Hate You Give, I, I guess that's where I felt like that familiarity came from was like who was she I know I've seen her face before but yeah according to Google she was in Hunger Games I didn't know that to me Amanda is another one of those stars who feel very down to earth she uses her platform for a lot of things I've seen as like in a little scroll by she does talk about things that happen in the community like you know how I, I don't like comparing people to the characters that they play but if you do know the hate you give you know the character star she kind of has like and uh she kind of talks about things that happen in the community she talks about uh shootings that happen to her, her friends or people she don't even know or like police brutality well amanda also kind of talks about those things on her own social media uh, with other things like she's a really down to earth type of person and like she use, she doesn't like make her a platform make her feel like i'm like above everything and i don't know how to talk to people who aren't famous or whatever like she seems like a really nice person. Unlike most of the other people who I'm going to feature in this series, Amanda La has recently came out. She came out last year during Pride Month, I think, as being gay. Before, I think she actually identified as something else, but I think she was like, no, I know that I'm this way and that's the way I am, which I kind of like that about someone where they're like, no, I know what I am and this is what I am now and I go by that now, whatever like a kind of go-getter kind of attitude and like just knowing the direction that you have in your own life unlike the other celebrities i've talked about i feel like i closely relate to amanda more basically just like on the way that she acts on her social media as i said before like she's down to earth and like has like weird humor like like most people do we all have weird humor but like just human like that's what i like about some celebrities is like when they actually are human or i guess if you don't believe that celebrities are human or act human like they're just acting human or whatever trying to act a certain way but you could tell like she does everything that's on her mind like she even posts what's on her mind sometimes which i find that to be nice about people I'm going to go back to talking about her acting career again. Like, I went to go see The Hate You Give, as you know. It's one of my favorite movies, even though I've only seen it once, but I love the book. And, like, she really played the role star very well. If you haven't seen it, go see the movie, if it's still playing wherever you are, or get the book. Because, like, when you see the way that, like, Amanda Lilla portrays star, you are not going to be sitting there, like, dry with a dry eye. You're going to be crying. You're going to need tissues. Like, I went to see it, and I was just, like, crying the whole movie. And my parents was like, looking at me like, why? Why did you make me come to this? You're just going to cry an entire time. But, like, the way that she plays the character is, like, so well done and so, like, uh, it's not disingenuous. Ingenuous, like, I guess that's a word. Uh, she does a really good job of, like, what she's doing because, of course, she's an actress. She should know what she's doing, whatever. But, like, she knows how to play a character well and knows how to get the right reaction out of the crowd at the same time. Now that I'm done talking about Amanda's art, let's talk about my art. So for this one, again, it was another one of those, like I had a hard time picking colors for this piece because like I wasn't sure like what to do, but I did go through her Instagram and I ended up finding like a pinkish color, I think at one point, and like some purple. Those are like 
the two that I've seen the most on her Instagram, and that's kind of what I ran with. It doesn't look like it in the picture, but I did try to make like the red that's on the sweater like a really dark red. But for some reason that day, like I just couldn't mix it right. Cause sometimes the red in my palette that I have sometimes appears more on the pinker side, depending on what's around it. And I guess today in this picture just continued to be more on the pinker side. So I guess it's more like a reddish wine color instead of like a crimson red that I really wanted for this piece. I like the texture that I made for her hair in this picture. What I did was like I took a really old brush of mine and just kind of like sprayed it out with my thumb and tried to like spread out the little bristles and then I went in with the color that I needed and just tried to like as lazily as possible trying to get like all the bristles to fan out in a way that I tried to get like that curly hair texture that she had for that day. Because her hair was like really long and curly in the picture that I was using as reference. And like I tried to make it like as frayed as possible and tried to like get it to be like as wild as curly hair is. Which also goes into the second part that I like about this piece. I also like how with the background, I went back in trying to make the hair look more dispersed. I tried to go in with like a small brush and try to like fill in some gaps to make it so like her hair, you can see through the, her hair into the background. That's what I really liked most about this piece. And as you will soon see again, I did not learn from the Tessa Thompson piece. I still tried to do the watered down version of like trying to add white highlights in, but I didn't want it to be completely white, otherwise it would kind of like throw off the balance of the piece. So I tried to mix it in with like a pinkish color that I still had left in my palette. It sort of worked, but it's still not the fact that I want it. Like maybe if I had gouache instead of just trying to use acrylic paint, Maybe it would have went for the thing that I wanted, but it it didn't. It looks kind of weird, but slightly better than the way when I try to do Valkyrie's uh, paint on her face. I know that right now it kind of looks like her eyes are cross-eyed, but they're not. You see soon when I do actually line the piece, it actually makes her eyes look more centered like they're supposed to. Like in the picture, she looks powerful and she's looking down, which is something that I do have trouble with when I do pictures like that. So I try my best and when I went for my lining, I just tried to make it so like the eye was as small as possible so you would think that she's looking down at the ground instead of like being like cross-eyed. <laughs> And with me finishing this lining, I am done with my Amanda Stenberg piece. If she does ever see this, I hope that she does like it and doesn't think that I'm trying to make a bad caricature of her. Please return later this week to see the last and final installment of my short series. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.